Hi, this is Happy Bird from Happy Bird's Glitter Nest blogspot.com. And today I'm going to show you how to put together this very sweet and simple little Scotty Dog ornament. I think this little guy turned out pretty cute. He's made of black felt and cardboard. And I have a free pattern for you that you can print out. I'll have the link in the first comment below this video as well as on my blog. And I'll also add um, the link as to where I found this chain and this little flower as well. And that will be on my blog. Just click on the picture of the Scotty dog and when it opens up, it'll be right there for you. Okay? So I really hope you enjoy putting this together. It was very simple. It just took a little bit of time though with the, the cutting and the gluing. But um, other than that, it was pretty easy to put together. So I hope you stay tuned, and I'll show you how to make this. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need um, to print out this little Scotty dog. And I'll provide the link down below in the first comment, as well as on my blog. If you go to my blog at happybirdsglitternest.blogspot.com, you'll see that the very first post it says all my patterns, um, find all my patterns here and if you click on that link then all the patterns I've ever made um, will be on there and um, you can print it out from there. So with that said, um, I'm just going to rough cut around this little spotty dog. Just like this. And I'm using my detail scissors because you really do need your detail scissors for this. Especially as you get down to this part. Now, if you don't have detail scissors or precision scissors, they call them both things, when you go to buy them, make sure that um, they have bevels, beveled points here at the top because honestly the detail scissors are useless without these and I have seen some that are called precision scissors and they didn't have the beveled cuts or the beveled um, blades at the tip and so I knew they wouldn't work very well so just watch for that Okay. So this is just a piece of cardboard packaging. It's not too heavy and it's not too light. It's just a nice weight, okay? And I'm just taking this double-sided tape here that I got at the Dollar Tree just to make this pattern stick on here. I could use a staple in the middle if I wanted to, but I'm just using the tape for now on the head and the body here. Yeah. And then I'm going to rough cut around this cardboard too. I have this thing where I just don't like a lot of extra anything when I'm cutting. <laughs> I have to get right up close and then cut because it bothers me having all this in the way. set aside and then I can just work on this. Now you can start cutting it anywhere. I'm just cutting slowly along the lines here. There's no reason for you to rush. Just take your time and it will be worth it. And just kind of watch where you're cutting and, and then turn the pattern as you need it. I said this is a, a medium weight cardboard. Cut that excess off. Any excess you can cut off like that will help you with your cutting. And you won't have to deal with it when you're trying to go around corners. Just 
cut it off. <laughs> and as you can tell, I'm not rushing. I'm just taking my time. And don't worry if it's not perfectly smooth when you're cutting it. I have a little trick that I use that seems to work pretty well, and I'll show that to you when I'm finished. I think it might be time to sharpen these blades, too. Okay. But believe me, it will be well worth it. Okay. I'm going to peel this off. Like so. Alright. Now, you can take your, just a regular fingernail file. And if you see little sharp points that you might have cut where it's not rounded you can just do this I mean don't go crazy with a fingernail file and you know rub and rub but you can do this a few times like that and that's enough just that little bit to smooth out any rough edges you might have and kind of round it off a little I might have shown you this in my gingerbread man or gingerbread house commercial, I'm not sure. Okay, and it just kind of rounds it off. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. Now this may seem a little strange to you, but believe me, there's a reason for it. Okay, you're going to take your black sharpie pen and on both sides and on the edges I'm going to just color this black and I'll show you what I mean when I say both sides I don't mean to cover the whole dog with a sharpie but I'll show you when I'm done with this part dog by accident. It doesn't matter. Okay, so then what we're going to do is just color on both sides just around the edges like this. Doesn't have to be perfect, just make sure a little bit of it is colored in around the edge. why we did this 
as we go along. We did that part and so on the back we're going to do the same thing even though this has a pattern on it we're going to do the same thing and if you have to go in twice on this to make sure this area here is covered in black and none of the print shows through and that's fine you can go ahead and do that doing a Christmas kitty too. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to have to go back in on some parts as you can see like this. I'm just going to let this dry and then I'm going to come back in and just go on top like that just to make sure all of the parts that are colored on this pattern are covered. Okay, so I'm going to do that and then we'll be back. Okay, so for this next part, I just have a piece of black felt and my little Scotty dog. And I'm going to put... Um, some hot glue with my Sherbonder Mini Detail Glue Gun right around the edge here. Now I'm not going to put it close to the edge because I don't want it to um, seep out of the edges when I put this down like this. And I glued his head down first because that has quite a few little twists and turns. So now what I can do is just very well actually it's easier if you do it this way because you can see what you're doing and how close to the edge you really are and just go up and down like this press this down okay I'm gonna fold this back and do this that down and, and fold that back and just go around here press that down his little nose and I'm pretty sure that I got it all now and don't worry if there's any fuzzies on top of this right here I'll show you how to clean that up when we're all finished okay so I just want to make sure everything is okay looks good I come across an area or two as I'm cutting you can always fix it so now I'm going to take my detail scissors again and uh, okay I'll be back I don't know what I did with them hold on okay sorry about that 
and you're just going to take your detail scissors and just kind of cut around it like this. I have the blades up against the cardboard, but I don't have it up against the cardboard to the point where I'm cutting the cardboard. You have to be careful of that. here. See this is where these detail scissors come in handy because you can make tight little corners like this. Like that. Okay. So you can take the, the beveled tips and cut like that. And then cut his around his nose. See, I'm just taking my time. I'm not going too quickly. Okay, and as you can see, I just kind of took my time with this. It's worth it when you do. Here's the back. Okay, and see, this is part of the reason why I colored the edges black because if you turn it on its side, you can't see any of this cardboard. And if you accidentally overcut a little bit, um, like I did here in the toe, it's not too bad, but I could actually fix this. Then you really can't see it. You can't see your mistakes. Yeah, see, I fixed it. <laughs> so um, that's the reason why I had you color around here, and it's well worth doing that. That's a really important step that you don't want to forget. Otherwise, you will be forever trying to touch up this dog after um, you put the felt on. So it's important to do this. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing on the back. And I'm just going to kind of rough cut around the dog a little bit, just to get a little piece of this off. Only this time, we're going to do it on this side. And I always start with a head. Because that has the most detail to it, I think. Okay. okay, so I have the dog's head glued on here. So now, 
around this way. All the way around here. Pat that down. And maybe put a little more here on that foot. And then Here, the other foot. Try not to get too too close to the edge. All right. So now I'm going to cut around here, and this is the part that you really do need good lighting because uh, sometimes it's difficult to see. Now you want to get fairly close. but not so close that you're going to be cutting the cardboard like I said before. Take your time with this part. Just going to cut this off. And don't worry if you don't get perfect cuts the first time. You can always go back in and trim it up. Sometimes I have to feel to see where I'm going to. like this as I'm cutting around it, just so it won't bend. And then the last part around here. Okay, now see, you can go back in with your little beveled tips here and clean it up. Try not to get too close. this a little. Yeah, but it looks pretty good overall and like I said um, that's why we colored the edges black because if there are any little um, mess ups then you won't be able to see it. Now you can tell there are some bits here and there that I got a little too close with the scissors even though I tried not to but you can always go back in and and do this be honest with you people aren't going to turn it on the side like this to inspect but I just like everything to look as finished as possible But overall, I did pretty good. I guess it was just that one little section and maybe the tip of the ear here. But that was easily fixed. Okay, yeah, it looks pretty good overall. All right, and so now I'm going to clean up my, my mess here and we'll go on to the next part. It feels nice and fuzzy. <laughs> okay, I'll be back. Okay, you can use a number of things for the dog's collar. You can use rhinestone chain. This is actually two-row chain. And um, this was very cheap. I purchased this on eBay from one of my favorite sellers and yes I'll have the link for you on my blog at Happy Birds Glitter Nest 
www.blogspot.com. Just click on the picture of the little Scotty dog and everything will open up and the link will be right there for you. And if you're watching this video a little bit later on where um, the Scotty dog has fallen off the first page, just go to where it says search at the very top near my header and um, click on the word search and just type in Scotty dog and it'll pop up for you. So um, with that said, I'll go ahead and tell you more about this chain. I got a yard of it for um, under three dollars. I think it was two two sixty seven this time. The seller changes his prices and sometimes he'll list three or four at the same time and um, so I just look for the cheapest price. but um, this is really a pretty chain. it's flexible. And like I said, you could use rhinestone chain, you can use link chain, um, you can use anything you want on the dog's neck, but I just thought this would be pretty. So, first thing I'm going to do is, I'm just going to measure it, and I'll probably measure it with a couple of extra links here, just because I want to make sure that I put this on the dog correctly and if I make a mistake then I'll have a couple of extra links to play with. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is count the links and then um, place the uh, little heart charm in the middle and I'm using a 7 millimeter jump ring that I got from Michaels and I also got this from Michaels, there was a package of them in the charm along uh, section, and there was quite a few in there. And there's a mixture of silver and brass. And you see a little heart on the back. So I thought that would be cute for a little dog tag. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is, like I said, is find the middle so I can hang the dogs chain there. So that looks to like the middle to me. You could count the links, but I just like to fold it in half just to see where everything is. So it's going to be right there that I'm going to hang this. So I'm going to fold this in half so I'll remember where it is. Open up my seven millimeter jump ring. I like these jump rings that I got at Michael's. It's very strong. So I want the word love to actually show on the front. So I'm going to hook that in between the two chains that are attached. And there we go. Like that. it says love. You know, I hope I got that right. It doesn't look like the middle to me. <laughs> it really doesn't. So, let's see. Oh yeah, that's why. Okay, because I wanted it right here. A little bit. Hanging a little bit off to the side. about like that. Okay. And you want to put it around the thinnest part of his neck. So it looks like I can cut off these links here and it'll be fine. Okay. So I'm going to hold this just like this. doesn't need glue all the way down. It just needs in spots here and there. And you don't need a ton. I love this detailed glue gun of mine. There's so many things that I could do that I couldn't do, that I can do that I couldn't do with um, a regular 
hot glue gun without making a big mess. Okay, so now I'm going to do this side as well. Hold it like this. there and like that so you don't need a ton of it and see it came together at the top so it looks really good but you gotta hold it like this all right okay I bought these little red ribbon flowers on eBay a while back and when I got them I just kind of separated the petals like this because they were a little bit bunched together and then once I did that they were really pretty and these were very inexpensive I'll see if I can find the um, seller on eBay again and list these but if not just type in the word uh, ribbon roses on eBay and a bunch of them should pop up for you these are approximately, well, from tip to tip, it's kind of hard to tell, but from tip to tip, I would say maybe, I don't know, 27 millimeters, roughly 27, maybe 28, kind of in between. Like I said, it's kind of hard to measure this, but um, I thought it would look really cute right here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some hot glue on the back. And I'm going to put it right about here. Now be careful because you want to leave a little area open here where you can fit um, a little cord right here to hang just a, a thin little beading cord because you're going to have to have the cord up here a ways like about here so when you hang this on the tree it won't do this okay because most of the weight is up here with the chain not that this is heavy I mean, really, this is lightweight, but compared to the back end, see, if I if I hold it on the back end and just let go, of course it falls forward. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that part next. Um, but before we do that, I was debating. I don't know if I'm going to do this or not, but I have some teeny tiny hearts from the Dollar Tree. I got this at Val on Valentine's Day. They had four different sizes in the pack. And I thought it might be cute to put a heart, a little tiny heart on his rear end. I don't know. I might do that. So, take my detail hot glue gun. If you have any questions about this, I'll also have a link on my blog for this um, under my little Scotty Dog uh, tutorial or I should say posting. Okay, so I'm going to put it right there. Just like that. Okay, so now we're going to do the top part. Okay, so I'm going to take this 1 4th inch wide ribbon and make a little hole with my bottle cap hole puncher here and then slide this through and I'll show you how to do that. I originally wanted a 1 8 inch wide ribbon but I looked in my stash and the only red ribbon I had was the 1 4th inch. So I'm going to have to use this. Now you're probably thinking well this will make a pretty small hole that won't even go through. Well I'll show you a little trick. Now I did learn something when I was putting this together the hard way, I should have left this to the very last to put on because I discovered that in order for this dog, this little dog, 
to stay straight and not to tip, you need to come over on the front side of the collar, right next to it. See, I'm right next to that collar, the front part of it. And make a little hole. And then I'm going to twist it. And if you don't have one of these bottle cap hole punchers, you can use anything such as an awl or um, anything to poke it through. It's not difficult to poke through. Okay, so we made the little hole. So now I'm taking a piece of 28 inch wire. It's really super narrow. 28 inch, I meant 28 gauge. <laughs> And I'm just going to cut a piece off. You don't have to use artistic wire. You can use the cheap floral wire. And I'm just bending it in half. And I'm going to put this through, if I can see. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So have it like, like this. And I'm just going to pinch it a little bit. Okay, so I'll push this on through that hole. I should actually probably twist it like that. That'll probably help it even more so. Okay. Yeah, that works better. Okay, so I'm just going to pull it on through. And I hope I can pull this through. And give it a little tug. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> okay. So. I'm going to straighten up the ribbon. Like that. Now this will be covered up. But see, it holds perfectly straight now. Just remember to do it, to poke that hole right next to the collar, on the front side of the collar, not behind the collar, with the front side. So that's what I learned. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to tie this in a little knot at the top, a little overhand knot. Straighten this out. Okay. So here we have our little talk. I think he turned out pretty cute. It's very simple. But sometimes simple is good too. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And I'd like to invite you to join me on my Facebook group at Happy Birds Glitter Nest. It's a group full of lovely people. And I'd love for you to join, and I'd also like to see your little Scotty dog, if you decide to make one. So with that said, you take care, and God bless each and every one of you. And if you haven't subscribed, be sure to do so, because I'll be posting Christmas videos every single week from now through Christmas Day. So you take care. Bye-bye.